Um, episode, I think I actually looked before because it's been at least six months since we recorded an episode. I'm going to take the full blame on that because I have a whole six month old baby at the house. So life has definitely changed for me, but this is LeBron Palmer and we've got Hey, Jerry Wood, PJ and, um, and the dad bod from about two years ago. But, so if anybody yeah. listens to this, I mean, we got to re-engage. I mean, we actually had Let's a decent, re- restart. Yeah, yeah, we had a decent, um, you know, group of people who are listening to us, commenting, giving us some feedback. But I think uh, moving forward, we've got a strategy we're working on. Now, we've said that before, but this time we're committed to it. Um and, and welcome. How have you been doing, sir? What's been going on? And what's crazy is this is probably the longest period of time in the last three years that I haven't seen you in person. It, it has to be. Yeah, I haven't seen you. Yeah, uh, everything's going good. I'm kind of, you know, New Year's resolution, I guess, uh, outside of losing weight because that never usually happens. But uh, <laughs> uh, is to, to put my golf more as a priority uh, over, like, developing the business. Um and kind of focusing on my players and just being a good coach and uh, getting better at my game, but specifically my putting, because all of us have a weakness in our game that, you know, Achilles heel and putting has been mine. So I feel like I've made progress and we'll, we'll see, but that's what I've been focusing on outside of, you know, the day-to-day hustle of teaching and, you know, trying to grow the, the golf academy. Yeah, yeah. With me, I, you know, I was shut down for a couple years of traveling, you know, so I've started to pick up a little travel again in my finance business. And then, of course, my content creation stuff, that's been going great. Like, um, yeah, it seems like it's getting blown up. Yeah, it's been it's been getting bigger and bigger. Um, obviously, I want us to, to ride some of those coattails because I think what you and I have and for people who have listened to us, they know that our dynamic is is really good, especially in person. So we've got to get back in person real soon for a couple episodes. So I'm eager to see where we can take, you know, golf performance group, the podcast over these next like six months. Cause there's a lot of golf content out there. So I don't know why we can't be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, And and that's actually another thing I've been focused on. I have a couple other pros that have been helping me with the content I have for drills, practice plans, videos, um, and trying to make it user friendly and, understandable to educate golfers to be a you know better student of the game so what we will one day we'll get that all put together so we can we will, uh, we will. Uh, help everybody out their game because that's really the goal of my goal my main goal is to share my experiences and insights <clears throat> and help you know amateurs that don't you know aren't in the industry haven't been doing it their whole life to kind of weed through the riffraff and what they should actually focus on with the time they have to, you know, devote to playing better. So no, no, exactly right. We'll get into that, but I think we've got to do, this is perfect timing for us to podcast your all time favorite golfer. You know, I think you would say that's yours. He's probably top two with me. I'm I'm a huge Tiger Woods fan, but I still sometimes Go back and forth. I've told y'all before, I really liked VJ Singh when he was, you know, playing. Although a lot of people thought he was an asshole. I worked at TPC Sawgrass. I thought he was great. I mean, he was actually really yeah. great. He was a great person to be Hard around. To judge those guys because you don't know what, you know, they're getting bombarded all the time. Yeah. You don't know what, you know, what he's going through when someone started talking to him and had their experience, you know. They- exactly. I liked Phil and until the last two weeks, three weeks. The golf world also liked Phil. We'll talk about he's that. He's like the media darling, the best coach, <laughs> media personality, and then he's the one that does that. Yeah, so so we're going to talk about that because we've been away, but we've got to get into Tiger Wood tweets. Week before he goes to the Masters, people are following his private jet. They are following the call signs of his plane, and they see it lands outside of Augusta, so they know that at least he's probably going to practice. I assume that if he went and practiced last week, he tweeted again yesterday that said, I will continue my preparation, and it'll be a game-time decision. So I want you to make a prediction right now. Does he play or not? I say yes. Okay. I, I want to, I want, you know, I, I like Tiger, 
you know, on the on the negative side, I could say, well, maybe he's trying to promote his his overall just brand of Tiger. Yeah, yeah. for a while, um, and he's actually, you know, he's launched that full swing golf yep. uh, launch monitor, which I just got in the mail this weekend. Nice, I nice. Use it. I uh, haven't had time to sit down and kind of mess with it, but you know, he he's got to stay relevant too. So. This creates a lot of hype, but I like Tiger and Tiger as a comp. I don't, I don't think he lets that kind of stuff overshadow like his development or his preparation. So if he was just doing it to get hype, it would set him back as a player because you know him every day. He has a strict regimen. So I- I'm going to say he's going to play. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I don't think he plays. And, and the reason why I say that is because there was two things that I saw, and this will go out today, by the way. So this is Monday, April, what's today? Fourth. Okay, Monday, April 4th. So this is before the Masters. We'll put this out today. Um, the reason why I don't think he plays is because, one, he was wearing foot joy shoes on the range. People, like, noticed that. So do you think Nike's going to let him out his contract for the Masters? He Foot joy probably has to pay Nike a fat sum. Okay. But- but I think Tiger, Nike golf, Tiger is Nike golf. Or Completely was. agree. And yeah. now, you know, there's some like Brooks and Rory that are athlete. Yeah, Jason Day. Yeah. 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 But he is Nike golf. So they might, I would say they would sacrifice their <clears throat> logo on his shoe for uh, a couple of events or maybe long term for him to be able to just play. You know what I'm okay. saying? But he went away from it. I mean, think about it now. He uses Bridgestone golf balls. Well, because Nike doesn't have any. I know, but but let's just think yeah. about what has happened to Nike golf. They no longer make clubs. They no, no longer make apparel, yeah. Yeah, they no longer make golf balls. The only thing they had was apparel and shoes. Like, so if he's not wearing that, I'm almost under the impression that, like you said, this might just be publicity because there is no way, at least the way my brain thinks, that Tiger would show up to the Masters where there's going to be a million cameras and not be wearing Nike. I just can't see it. Yeah, well, he already did it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're it. right. I guess he you're already did it. <laughs> so the, behind the scenes, there must be something. But he also, I'm sure he's been out there ever since, let's say, that father-son tournament. Uh, you know, you can go to Augusta. If you're a past champion or you're playing in the event, you can go out there and play as much as you want. Throughout you can. The- you can. Yep. So, uh, I'm I'm guessing that he probably made a plan for getting out there and walking X amount of holes, you know, seeing how he feels. And, like, he, I, he might think he can go unless, you know, this is where he's going to walk a full course and, like, on Tuesday or whatever that – there's a non-event. What is that, part three, Wednesday? Yeah, but, Wednesday. Wednesday morning. Uh, what, like, today or tomorrow, he may walk and – you know, if he's not too sore, I'm sure he's probably not going to be comfortable afterwards. But if he thinks he and he's tiger, so you, you want a U.S. Open on a broken leg, you know. He did. So sure did. He, sure he did. I, I think they're probably telling the truth, and it, it's probably fifty-fifty. You know, I don't know. Man, I, I so I will say this, and this is a prediction: if he does play, he definitely makes the cut. And on Saturday, moving day, there will be probably about a four or five hole stretch where people are going to be like, shit, Tiger can win this thing. Like, I guarantee that happens. I can, I can see that happening, but I can also see, so, well, one, I guess is probably the easiest, no, it's not easy, but there's only 84 players in the field and they Correct. can't top 50. So it's not 130 player field and, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of guys that, you know, it's a fine line between being in the Masters and not being in the Masters. Those He doesn't have to beat 40 guys that could, you know, beat him. <laughs> so, no, no, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not like um, – and the way they do past champions and stuff like that. It, the field does get diluted, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the field gets diluted, especially yeah. the – you know, a lot of them, you know, back out like Jack, Arnie, they, you know, they Gary Player, yeah. they don't play. But, but there's still some guys like – I say Sandy Lyle, but then he always like shows up second page of the leaderboard somehow. You're right. You're right. Yeah, You're right. Is, but, you know, then you have all the amateurs um, that not all of them, but I mean like five of them, I think, yeah. or six. So really he's got to be like a dozen, a couple dozen tour tour guys, maybe. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, and to me, 
And he can just outsmart them and slop it around because he knows yes. that. The back he knows that course. He can, he knows especially, and it brings me back to when he won in 2019 when Molinari and Finau were both um, about to tee off on the par three, um, no, the par four 16, wasn't it, where they hit it in the water on their second shots? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knew, because he's played that a hundred times, that there is a wind like tunnel right there that'll yeah. catch the ball right before it gets to the green. Yeah. They tried to play it towards the flag. He played it towards the fat part of the green. They both went in the water. He wins the tournament. So I think he's got that institutional course knowledge that'll help him. I agree. I, I think his mind is on a different level of like his golf IQ. And then when it comes to Augusta, he knows that better than anyone. I mean, it, as long as he can move. And He'll be able to play. Yeah. Like he's just got to, you know, if I was Tiger and as a golf instructor, I would just kind of lean on my left side, swing my arms, hit these punch cuts, punch yeah, just, cuts. Just slap it, yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. You know, if his putting is, is good, then he's going to be in contention. So, Okay, so here's the thing. Um, Y'all who have listened to us before, who you'll see this surprise in your podcast feed, we always talk gambling. And this will be the first time that we can do it in real time. So, JJ, let me tell you how the pool works. So this, let's just say I'm going to pay the uh, uncomfortable amount of money that I'm paying to be in this pool, but this is a golf performance group. I actually have a text from someone in Ohio that I'm supposed to get into their pool, but no. I haven't looked at so, it yet. Then you could use these same. So how this pool works, it's there are six tiers, okay? And in each tier, you pick one golfer, except tier one, you get to pick two golfers, which is the top 10 in the world. So I'm going to go through a few names and you just let me know who should we, we should pick in each tier. So okay. tier one is Cameron Smith, Morikawa, Johnston, I mean, Johnson, John Rahm, Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantley, Scotty Scheffler, and Victor Hovland. Who are the two we should pick out of that tier? Okay, so where's Morikawa been? Morikawa is in tier one. Has he been playing? He has been playing. He's in, he him. hasn't won, though. He has not won. So, And I haven't really seen him in contention either. No. So, but he seems like, you know, like that Brooks Kepka, like they yeah. show up at the majors. Yep. So it's yep. hard to rule him out, but I'm going to rule him out for a second. I'm, I don't like what do you think of Hovland? I think he's in. He's always okay. up there. He is always up there. And, what do you think uh, of Scheffler? Gosh, he's so hot. It's so easy to throw him in there. But – when is that, you know, hangover going to happen? <laughs> you know, hey, what, what about Dustin Johnson then? He's won there. He hasn't won in a while. He's, he's like Tiger. He's not Tiger, but he's Dustin Johnson. He can play, he can turn it on at any given moment. Uh, and, you know, Cantley is also one of those guys that he, he's at the place in his career where he says, I only show up to win. Like that's where he's at now. So I would go Hovland, DJ, Morikawa. Well, I can only pick two in the first oh. tier. So right now, Hovland is for Hovland sure. Hovland and DJ. Okay, Hovland and DJ, done deal. Okay, tier two, I can only pick one. All right. Answer, Horschel, DeChambeau, Matsuyama, Oosthuizen, McElroy, Burns, Shoffley. I was already leaning towards Oosthuizen, but let me know. Oosthuizen, I can see why you picked that, but Rory and uh... – Gosh, who did you say right before him? Um, Matsuyama and DeChambeau. Those two are out. Okay, Sam Shambo Burns. I think, I think Hideki withdrew this past week. Uh, for some. He sure did. You're right. You're right. DeChambeau no. has improved, he no nope. play. Uh, and his so, back has been hurting him. So, yeah. So, we got McElroy. Who else? Marshall, Answer, or Shoffley. Answer Shoffley. Uh, I want to say answer just because he's a he's a boomer sooner, but so not Ustazen. I, I gosh, he's so good and he's been so close so many times. So not Ust. See to me, Louie, you always. Oh, I know, and I'm gonna. Well, that's like the last ten years. He's like runner up or win. That's what I'm saying. You have to pick him in the Masters. Well, then I would go um, Rory and him. Okay. All right. Done. I mean, let, yeah. No, I can only pick I one in tier two. I can only pick. I can only pick one in tier two, though. 
Oh, I just can't bet against Rory because he's the guy can turn it on anytime too. And he's good. I'm going to come back to that one. All right, tier three. This is where it gets interesting. Brooks, Berger, Neiman, Spieth, Fitzpatrick, Casey, Finau, or Hatton? Spieth. Over Kepka? It's kind Over of Kepka. It's hard to, I mean, Augusta, he shows up. Okay. It's kind of like Louie and Tiger, you know? Okay. Last one. Tier, or two more, sorry. Tier four. And again, remember, you're supposed to pick opposite of what I do. So, <laughs> no, we're, this is we're the back in too. Tier four. Man, this is tough too. Connors, Kistner, Na, Reed, Taylor Gooch, Will Zalatoris. Ooh. That's why I said, oh, Sanjay M. And Sanjay and Sun M also. I feel personally connected to these people because I hosted Gooch when he was in eighth grade on his recruiting trip when I was 22 years old. So <laughs> yeah, he probably doesn't remember. I like him. Uh, Corey Connors, I liked him when I, I played when I played in the Houston Open. He was my partner. And we both I like Corey Connors too. I like Corey Connors' he's game. Too. Like, he's solid, man. He, he's, he's been solid. He's consistent. Yeah. And then who were the other ones? Sun J.M. Alan Who? Alan Torres. Alan Torres. I almost beat him in a putting contest, but he beat me, and I'm a great putter. That's what I'm telling myself. So should I go with Alan Torres? He I mean, almost won last year, didn't he? Yeah, but he fell apart. He fell apart on um, he got the second. back nine. He fell yeah. apart on the back nine. Um, well, I don't know, man. It. I like Alan Torres, Connors. I like, I like Connors. I like Connors in that group. No, I, I think I'd pick Connors just because yeah. Al Torres is hot streak. I mean, he set his standard so high. He did. He did. But, uh, and he, uh, nothing against him. He's he's going to be a top player in the world, or he is already. But yeah. I think Corey Connors, he's just so solid, and he's been so steady for, like, a couple of years now, where he's right up there a lot. Okay. Here's, here's now we start getting to some of the older guys. Okay. So these last two are kind of the guys who are just hanging on, and let's see what you think. Adam Scott, uh, you know, this is a newer guy. He just qualified for the Masters, so not an older guy in this group, but he is Tier 5, HV3. I like Harold Varner, of course. Here you go, Tim. I, I can't do that, though. because Can you Masters. just pick Harold Varner for the first three rounds? No, this is first. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and this is first Masters. I'm, I don't like to pick anyone. Who got the side, though. He won. Yeah. A couple times. A couple times. Yeah. American, or okay. Here. Shane Lowry, Tom Hoagie. Webb Simpson. Shane Lowry. He's been playing pretty well. You think so? Oh. I think his hangover is over from that British Open because he didn't play. (laughs) That was two years ago. (laughs) Yeah, he's finally coming back, and he's been playing well. He almost won, uh, was that Doral or Bay Hill or Honda, one of those sport events. And I missed one, Seamus Power. Ooh, he's – I don't know enough about him. He can play, though. He can play. yeah, he can play. I see his name a lot now. And, yeah. Man, that's why I don't see how you say, you know, picking golf's easy because it's like they're all good. Like, I just – I've played too much golf to know how how fast it can turn. It <laughs> does turn. Okay. And then last one, um, Cameron Young, Mark Leishman, Matt Wolf, Russell Henley, Sergio Garcia, and then Kan- Kan- Kanaya, the Takumi guy, he's real good right now. Um, I know you've probably seen him in the last – Couple saw, weeks. It was he in the match play? Yeah, he's he's really good now. I was, and, I was and like, who, who is this guy? He's really good. And then Tommy Fleetwood. I'm not picking Fleetwood, period. He always burns me. So I would um, go uh, Leishman. Leishman. That's what I was thinking too. Okay. All we're, right. So we've got our selections. Neil Smith has been on the podcast. So yeah, we've got our we've got our selections. I think we're good. Um, y'all will see how we do, and I'll, I'll figure out a way where we can post this. And then I'm gonna make a a, a flyer. I'm gonna do like a half unit just on Tiger Woods, the top 10, um, just because I, you know, if he plays, it, it's worth 500 bucks to me. So I'm going I'm to I'm put a half unit on Tiger, the top 10. Um, oh, so I forgot to tell you. I haven't told you this part either. So last week I played in the Monday qualifier for Valero. Okay. And I got paired with Taylor Funk. Oh, okay. Well, we had that interview with Taylor. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the baby walrus, or as I think I saw some more small, small wrist, Kevin Stadler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was a fun time. Uh, Stads is, he's probably, it's the second time I've played with him. He's probably my favorite golfer. Okay. Because he is just 
a good old boy. I would say country boy, but he's from California. Um, but he lives in Colorado, but he's just like, likes to drink beer and he doesn't take any time. He just steps up, hits it, finds yeah. it, hits it. And, uh, yeah, Taylor's got game too. Um, now who won? Who won between you and Taylor? Come on now. We, we actually tied. And so, you know, this is kind of embarrassing to admit. So th- uh, through nine holes, I, it was real windy on the front. I was three under and I, I, they're doing live scoring. So I get in it to sign my card and I'm leading the qualifier and everybody's on the back nine, you know, in four okay. spots. Go. But on the back nine, it changed. And I, I uh, made I had a stretch of four bogeys in a row, shot seventy three. So, uh, but uh, uh, this is a learning uh, experience for not just me, but everybody. So, I recently switched to TaylorMade, and by by the way, I first time since I got the PXG irons in 2015, 2014, These these irons are amazing. Okay, uh, they're like everything's amazing, but. For me, because I, I hit real down on it, and so the drivers always, if I switch drivers, it's all about, I got to find a shaft that's perfect, and I hadn't tried this shaft, and I didn't have to use it on the front. I used it once, and I hit a high right, which is usually my miss, but I, I made my par. Second nine, I used it a bunch, and it was just not in play any at all. Okay. And, and uh, so... Now I'm going back to my, I'm using my ping because I have tournament today and tomorrow. So the ping I, I practiced with the last couple of days and hopefully I'll be able to keep it together for 18 holes. Well, 36 holes. But yeah, uh, let's check out your new TaylorMates then. What, what, what did you get? Uh, the Stealth. And it's really good. I mean, all this okay. stuff is really good, but uh, they, like in the, the shaft options, they don't have the shaft option I've played the last five years or so, which okay. I could get it, but... I, I can get it from them, but I went with one I thought would be good, and it's just it, – it's a good shot, just not for me. Okay. <laughs> it, I just couldn't get it in the air. It was like – usually my miss is a spinny high right, but these were like knuckleball, like low right. I'd never seen it, and I didn't know how to Band-Aid it. I was just like – just hoping for the best like everybody else when they tee off usually. Of like, course. That's so all. it's a learning experience. Get to know your equipment, and the other thing is, you know, I think – a lot of people all get a negative perception perception of club fitting because if they go to a club champion, they're going to upcharge you and do all this, which I agree with that point. But you want to make sure you have equipment that fits you. Don't just buy stuff off the rack. Yeah, it, you know, have your coach, your instructor fit you because they're not going to be trying to you know upsell you, upsell you. But they know your golf swing and they know and get the clubs that is going to adapt to the swing you're trying to you know make. So, yeah. and that's why, you know, this shaft that I've been thinking about for a long time, I finally got it and I didn't have time to practice it, but I was like, how different can it be? It was different. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, get fit. It's important to have clubs that fit because you can make good golf swings and your ball's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be accurate feedback for if you're making okay. a good swing or not. So, so now you've got a tournament <clears throat> before we get out of here um, today, you've got a tournament today. Hopefully the rain, because it looks like it's about to downpour where I'm at. So I don't know if it is on the north side with you. Well, our tournament's down by it's uh, Sugarland. Uh, well, I mean, if you look, if you look outside where I'm looking right now, I've been looks, watching it. Yeah, yeah, it looks like. So tell us what is this? Is this a section event? Um, and tell us how your season's been going, and and then give some people some ideas on how you've been preparing for this upcoming event. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so it's the South Texas PGA. We have five majors a year. So you can look at it like the FedEx Cup. You have those four events or is it three events now? I'm not sure. But we have five events where you can you get points based on how you finish. The section championship, our fifth event, final event, uh, you get a little bit more points because it's not quite double. But uh, And then we have three tour exemptions based on how you play during the year. So uh, first and second on the player of the year list, get an exemption to, and it depends on what the player of the year chooses, either Houston, Valero, or the new event in Mexico. We have now Mexico city this year. Uh, and then the section champion gets, um, they get second choice after the player of the year. And then the runner up on the player of the year gets the third choice. Nice. Um, so what I've been doing is, you know, I've been trying to, when I have free time, I just get out and play a few holes. So I kind of keep that, you know, scoring your golf ball mindset. 
I've been working a lot more on my putting, which I played a couple, you know, that Monday qualifier and I played a, a little tournament the week before to kind of kind of get the rust off and test out my progress with the putting. Um, and then uh, and wedges is always a key for my game because um, the distances we play around 7,000 yards is pretty short now for modern modern day. So if I'm hitting my driver good, I'm, I'm hitting it a lot and I'll have wedges in. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it today? Like, you know, because most people work and, you know, you don't have time. Say you're going out to your, your money game at your country club or, your you know, whatever course you don't warm up properly. You don't stretch no, out. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. So I make sure to get up, you know, at 5 a.m. And I did about a 30 minute uh, stretching routine. Um, I have a, you know, a mental game thing I'll listen to, to kind of rehearse the round. And now you don't have to go that far if you're just going out to play, but it's really beneficial if you do want to do it. Um, and then, uh, you know, so I could have time to do this podcast and get a couple other things done for work. Uh, and then I, I'll get down there, but I'll re-stretch out because it's about a 45 minute drive and, you know, I'm old and fat, like the majority of American golfers. And so I, but I'm going to, this morning I did more like foam rolling, uh, uh, some static stretching, but then down there, I'm going to do some dynamic stretch, just dynamic stretching, and then go through my war. I have a, a routine I go through to get my speed control for my, you know, putts chips to see how the green reacts when the ball lands you know on the practice screen and then because it's pretty similar I was already down there Friday um so I know there it's similar to the golf course and then I go through like my range routine for my uh full swing and then I head to the tee so nice well we're we're uh, sending um positivity your way to get get the best outcome for that. And if and anybody I, watches, you can go to the stpga.order.com and then find the leaderboard. They they do live scoring hole by hole. So it's, oh, I'm going to be doing that today for sure. Like without question, I'll be doing that. So yeah. I've got a few meetings and a couple other things like that. So I'll definitely be able to tap into that. So, well, you know, we gave people an up. It, it, it's been a it's been a journey, you know, this baby been kicking my butt. Like it's, it's, it's a whole, I and I had a couple other buddies that have had, and it's like, everybody's out of commission. Yeah. You, you're out of commission, man. Like when you, like everything is devoted to that. And then when you start traveling a little more, et cetera. So I'm glad that we're able to kind of pick back up some steam. You'll see more special guests. Hell, I even talked to Taylor Cusack the other day, just randomly. And she was like, yeah, we, I want to be guests on episodes again. And I was like, you can come on anytime you want to. So, you know, we'll be working on a lot of stuff as we continue to get this together. So um, if you like what you've heard, go follow us. We still get followers for whatever reason. Also, we haven't posted anything on golf pod for the longest, but go follow us at golf underscore pod on Instagram. Um, JJ, where can they find you at? Uh, at JJ Wood Golf on uh, you know social media, pretty much all of them, and then uh, YouTube would be Golf Performance Group. We have a channel with some drills and some other insight to help your game. Yeah, and the YouTube will also have the podcast on YouTube as well. Yeah, we have that as well. Yep. So, so the YouTube will have the podcast, and you could also find us on uh, find me at LeBron o. Palmer. That's LeBron and Arnold Palmer kind of combined. So. Um, again, we appreciate it. Rate, review, tell your friends. Um, I know JJ probably will share this with members and a newsletter. I'm going to share it with a group of people that were kind of back engaged. So um, we can just really say that's episode one, but it is like episode 54, I think. Have we done one in 2022? We have not uh, done one in 2022. Uh, we can say episode one, 2022. Yeah, episode one in 2022 of the Golf Performance The beginning Podcast. of the new generation in metaverse. In Metaverse, yes, yes. We need to get some of that Metaverse money. All right, we're out. <laughs>